Hey guys, what is up? This is Swift here for Chinese Tech. Today, I have with me my full review and analysis of the Xiaomi Mi Sun or Mi3 or uh, Mi3, whichever way you want to call it. Now, this phone, you're looking at it right here. I have rev uh, unboxed it in the previous video. So if you want to take a look at the uh, accessories they provide or how the packaging looks like, uh, do refer to my previous video. Uh, so we have reviewed the budget phone from uh, Xiaomi and this time we are going to review the flagship phone now this is the Mi 3 and this is the latest offering by Xiaomi so we will just head straight into the hardware specifications and specifications of the phone in general just to take note that there are two main versions of this phone there is one that supports the uh, TDSC DMA version which is more for the Chinese uh, people for the China people living in China rather uh, as their telco use it or the WCDMA version which I am currently holding and that's more for the international um, consumer based off the bands that they provide so this phone the dimension of the phone is 144 by 73 and in terms of thickness is 8.1 or in millimeters now next up it has a single, single sim slot and it supports 2G and 3G, again GSM and WCDMA. Uh, in terms of the bands that they support for 2G, GSM network is 850, 900, 1800 and 1900 MHz. In terms of WCDMA, the 3G network, it supports 850, 900, 1900 as well as 2100 MHz. Display wise is a 5 inch uh, 1080p full HD IPS display protected by some kind of glass that I cannot say that's Gorilla Glass because it is not advertised. Um, kind of weird really because their uh, budget phone itself <laughs> is advertised to have Gorilla Glass too and their flagship phone just have some generic protective glass over the display. So nothing to, wor to worry about that because it does does its purpose in protecting the display itself so far is looking perfectly fine then uh, in terms of cpu the phone packs a punch in terms of raw processing power it has a qualcomm snapdragon 800 processor similar to that of your galaxy note 3 and the gpu is the andreno 330 now if you look at the synthetic benchmarks uh, you can head straight into my full recent review uh, i pasted some pictures there of the benchmark that i run you will find that the phone tops the chart even better if not equal to the note 3 so this phone flagship phone is one of the most powerful phone that you can buy with money right now and uh, so that's something to take note about so in terms of camera, it has a front and rear camera. Front camera is a 2 megapixel camera and the back is a 13 megapixel camera. Both of which are capable of taking videos up to 1080p at 30 frames per second. There is of course the OS that's running which is the MIUI version 5 but it is based off Android 4.3. Uh, the differences between the MIUI based of 4.3 and the one that is based of 4.2.2, I did not find any difference at all. So uh, for those who want to take a look at how the system works, some of the special features and software, do uh, refer to my Me or Hongmi review uh, and uh, you can just read off or hear what I have to say for that. This phone will not, sorry, this review will not cover that section, that part, because uh, it's already done and there isn't much else to say but of course if you don't watch I can just say it right off my head right now the MIUI uh, is one of the best or better uh, custom Android OS that you can uh, use and uh, there are many people flashing on your phones that aren't officially supported but uh, that's how popular it is and it works it works really well for all kinds of uh, users the functions etc are perfect for any kind of smartphone usage so that's my take on the uh, MIUI uh, custom Android OS now there is GPS as well and the GPS works perfectly fine out of the box isn't as isn't like your MediaTek phones uh, that you have to use some kind of fix etc and even after the fix isn't the best but this GPS on this phone is accurate and really really good all right that's all you have to do I have tested it 
personally, um, through a car, a sitting car, the buses, etc., and it tracks perfectly well. In terms of W uh, wireless LAN, uh, there's an interesting thing to take note. The phone supports 5 GHz bandwidth, and I've tested it out, and it doubles, almost doubles the download speed. Uh, of course, your mileage may vary uh, de uh, depending on the router you have, the internet connection you have, etc. But uh, you just have to take note that uh, 5 GHz is available uh, on this phone. In terms of battery, it has a 30... 3050 milliampere hour battery uh, non replaceable because of the unibody design and uh, the battery life is pretty decent uh, for medium to heavy kind of usage uh, it should work perfectly fine throughout the day to take reference I have managed to put out um, about 2 hours 30 minutes of viewing a video on YouTube uh, via Wi-Fi and then I had one hour of web browsing via 3G. I had 30 minutes of using the phone as a tracking device for GPS and music. And that totals up to roughly around four hours of heavy content usage. And on top of that, I had 19 hours of standby time, all of which is done under 3G. Well, 3G is on and Sync is on. So there are some messages that come by via WhatsApp as well as the normal SMS. And uh, it all... Uh, included with some phone calls etc and it all lasted over 19 hours so a total the phone lasted a total of 23 hours close to 24 hours a full day and uh, of course those of you who are going to use it uh, much heavy, heavy, heavier than me you're gonna find that the phone should be adequate enough for you else you will probably have to charge midday and that's about it now, in terms of uh, other functions that the phone has, the phone have uh, NFC, it has Bluetooth version 4, it has a micro USB port that supports OTG, and uh, technically, uh, what some people say unofficially is that the micro USB slot is supposedly uh, support, it supports TV out via the MHL link, so you can HDMI out technically, but uh, what people say is that the current software version, the MIUI software does not allow that. I'm not too sure. Uh, you can take it with a pinch of salt, but officially, officially, uh, it isn't advertised to have uh, MHL capabilities. So that's something you might want to take note of. It has FM radio, which is always nice, Wi-Fi display as well as NFC. Uh, so there's some features that are only available on flagship phones, you have it on the flagship phone of Xiaomi as well. So we'll take a look around the phone and then I'll tell you a little bit more of my thoughts on the build quality and some of the other things, the design of the phone. Now, of course, the front, there is nothing much. You have a LED notification at the top. It isn't the biggest one, but it is bright enough for you to uh, take notice of should you have any kind of notification uh, running at the background, etc. Now, in terms of buttons, we have three capacitive buttons at the bottom. And at the right side, we have the volume rocker as well as the power button. Now, this is something that I've said over time and time again that um, I do not like how they place it like that because, because there is always a chance that you mispress mistakenly the power button for the volume down. Now you might think that this is impossible, but you will make that kind of mistake. So uh, yeah, this is something I don't really like, but uh, you it takes some time to get used to. That what That's what I'm going to say. At the top, we have the... At the top, we have the um, micro the SIM slot rather, uh, they give you two kinds of tray, one is for micro SIM and the other one for the normal SIM and at this side of it we have the 3.5mm audio jack. Now one thing to take note about the SIM card slot is that uh, it officially supports up to micro SIM right and uh, for those of you who have nano SIM uh, which is going to be quite some of you already if you have recon recontracted and with all the new iPhones etc you might you will have to use an, an adapter and the thing is make sure absolutely make sure that the adapter is not going to increase the thickness by much because there are many reports that the sim card tray gets stuck and uh, you cannot even remove it so uh, that is something you might want to take note of 
Now down at the bottom, like I showed you just now, we have the micro USB slot as well as the speaker out of the phone. Now I really really like this from Xiaomi themselves. Uh, it is much better than placing speakers at the back because at the side when you put it down you're gonna hear it and if you hold it, usually you watch a video or what, whatever, you're gonna hold it like that or however you hold it, uh, the speaker is gonna project to its best capabilities. Now there is one problem though, having it at the bottom or even at the top is that should you play a game, which I'll show you later, that requires you to hold the phone in a controller style grip like that. You see the problem? Yeah, you are going to cover up the speakers. So that's something that you might want to take note of. Again, the best, I believe, is to have the speakers at the front. I don't know why no one wants to do that except HTC themselves. But uh, perhaps, you know, there they find there's no need to and it destroy the aesthetic appearance of the phone so at the back one thing that i want you to look at is the dual led flash here i've tested it out it isn't brighter than a single led but what it does is that it is a wider it covers a wider range and it splashes the light um, at a wider angle uh, this is done via the human eye, no special apparatus, but it's quite obvious as to how it performs. So, now you, you see the phone, in terms of design, it's pretty uh, simple and minimalistic. Um, it has a unibody plastic design, built rather, and uh, so some of you are going to say, oh my god, it's plastic, but it feels pretty damn uh, awesome and strong and sturdy. Um, it is probably because of that the they advertise it to have a magnesium alloy frame built inside so uh, it is light and strong so i really like it really the unibody design is always nice but of course it has its own uh, cons as to non-replaceable battery etc but overall the phone looks perfect and it feels really really um sturdy and premium now the one thing that I would like to point out is that this phone is slightly longer than um, other phones that you can buy uh, comparing if you can compare the uh, display size you can see it's a 5 inch display phone but the length here is slightly slightly longer than all other kinds of phone uh, so that's something to take note of but it doesn't affect your comfort or usage by any means right it's just that just something for you to take note of so in terms of design and build i really really like it now moving on to the phone performance uh, i've already talked about the battery life now let's just talk about general phone usage of course the phone works as a phone and that's the most important thing no drop calls no um no poor quality calls um the voice from both ends from receiving ends and the recipient and the one that's sending uh, is perfectly clear i've tested it a lot of times already through my phone course and it works perfectly well so um the next up so general phone is work it works perfectly now other kinds of usage the phone is perfectly smooth now i'm just going to show you there we go someone's birthday all right um it is smooth as butter now this is to be expected right because it's using one of the best processors, mobile processing unit that you can buy with money right now. So it's very, very smooth. There is no lag, there's no anything at all in all my week of usage. And I've downloaded WhatsApp, I have uh, my Gmail things on, etc. Running a lot of apps at background, it works perfectly fine. So very, very smooth, um, really good. Now, in terms of gaming performance, let's just show you now it runs any kind of games perfectly fine now you're gonna see here this is real racing i always use this as an example because it's one of the more graphically intensive uh, games that is available on the android os right Oh god. Let's just hit into a 
game. All right. Now uh, I'm going to do really badly because it's really hard to play and record at the same time. And you will see. that it is running smoothly there is no there are no frame rate drops oh god <laughs> I wanted to go get away from the light so right it's almost impossible to play like that so yeah you can see there you go, works perfectly fine. No frame rate drops whatsoever. So um, yeah, gaming performance, it'll run anything you throw at it, basically. And um, so in terms of performance, there's no need to doubt anything about this phone. It just works perfectly fine. Moving on to the camera, uh, you're gonna see some pictures that I inserted into this video review uh, is that the pictures taken are crisp and sharp the color reproductions are pretty good as well uh, so you will uh, have a rather decent uh, photos production in terms of using this uh, phone as the camera in terms of video taking um, it works pretty well as well the sound recording as well as video recordings are rather rather good i've compared it to other phones like the htc one etc and uh, it, it looks and sounds pretty good um, there's one thing to take note of is that um, the hdr functionality of the phone is kind of weird really uh, basically the photos that are produced using the HDR function uh, looks kind of weird. Um, you can take a look at the photos themselves and judge. And uh, I think it's a problem with the software really because it happened on the Xiaomi uh, Hongmi as well. So uh, that's something that you might want to take note of. Obviously, if you want the unedited photos, uh, the original photos will be available for download. The download links will be in the full written article and the link to the written article it will be in the description bar below now that all said uh in terms of community support uh this phone runs on the miui and it is a os that is highly highly regarded in the developing development community and it is very cared for by the official developers themselves so i uh, do be prepared that that there will be patches coming in out to patch either bugs or fixes and there will be even uh, major uh, versions that are introduced as well uh, and having the flagship phone you should be able to upgrade and update yours to the latest for the next few months or years to come so that is something that is really, really good if you are looking to buy a phone to uh, flash a custom ROM uh, yeah basically out of luck because they're not going to find any um, so that's about it uh, there are official communities that are based off Chinese language there is an English one as well but isn't that uh, I don't believe there's an English one sorry uh, there are English ones that are in the official ones that are quite populated and active so uh, that shouldn't be too much a problem as well so in conclusion the phone is really really good um, the price of the phone, you're going to hear it, uh, is 419 Singapore dollars. That's the official price. That's roughly 330, 340 US dollars. And for that price, you can never get any phone with such hardware specifications. Putting hardware specifications aside, software side, it runs a very, very good custom Android OS as well. So this good software, good hardware, there's a match break in heaven. The Mi Sun is basically a value for money phone and it's a premium value for money premium phone but the main problem is the availability of the phone now that's the huge huge downside of Xiaomi phones in general is that you are basically not able to get them you cannot find them unless you are willing to pay a higher price than normal uh, by via buying through agents or resellers otherwise be prepared to be waiting for your phone to come uh, and uh, be prepared to wait at the computer to immediately buy a phone uh, once it is out when once it is selling uh, to take reference um, the phone that you see the Mi Sun was sold out in 
two minutes when it's put up for sale. Yes, two minutes and it's gone out of stock. You cannot buy it anymore. So that's one of the main problems of the phone. So if you're going to buy it through resellers or agents, etc., you're going to find that the price is going to be slightly more expensive. Uh, will it be still worth it? Technically, yes, but uh, you might want to consider other options as well. So that's about it. Uh, this is Xiaomi Mi Sun. If you can get it at the uh, retail price of 419 Singapore dollars or about 330-340 US dollars, it is a phone that comes sent from heaven. So uh, that's about it. If you like my content uh, and more of such Chinese technology reviews, etc., do subscribe to the Chinese Tech Channel. Uh, visit our website for more written information. Uh, it's www.chinesetech.net. Otherwise, uh, I'll see you guys again soon.